Are you ready to take your business to the next level? Every day there are countless books and articles that are published offering the key on how to make your business a success. It's easy to feel overwhelmed trying to keep up and run your business. That's why Deb Creer created the Business Power Hour. Keep up on the latest trends, best practices, and techniques for how to make your business a success. Let the Business Power Hour do the heavy work for you. Good morning, good morning. I am Deb Creer, and I am passionate about giving professionals the tools that they need to make themselves and their businesses as successful as possible. And this is another one of our programs where we're focusing on what is happening in our lives pertaining to coronavirus. Um, you know, I decided to do a whole week's worth of programs because I think this is a very important topic. More importantly, what we're learning now, we will be carrying forward forever. You know, things will be changing. There's going to be all sorts of things that will be happening, especially from a business perspective. And so I've not only been having fun it, talking with all my guests during this, because I always do that, but I'm also learning a lot and as always hoping that you are learning from us also. So please join me in welcoming today's guest, Eileen McDar. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, Eileen. Thank you. Thank you. Well, let me tell people a little bit about you, and then we will jump into this. So Eileen McDar, McDar see? Uh, it, CSP, CPAE, and CEO, which she says is Chief Energy Officer of the Resiliency Group. Since starting her consultancy practice in 1980, Eileen has become known as a master facilitator, an award-winning author, and an internationally recognized keynoter and executive coach. She's the author of seven books, including her latest, Your Resiliency GPS, A Guide for Growing Through Life and Work. Her book, Gifts from the Mountain, won the Ben Franklin Gold Award and was turned into a training program featuring Eileen. Her newest book is scheduled for release in August, and we'll have to chat with her about coming back then. Burnout to Breakthrough is the name. Burnout to Breakthrough, Building Resilience to Refuel, Recharge, and Reclaim What Matters. In 2020, Gurus International, a British-based provider of resources for leadership, communication, and sales training, also ranked Eileen in the top five of the world's top 30 communication gurus following a global survey of 22,000 business professionals. Eileen is a certified speaking professional. That was the CSP part I mentioned. And she was elected in the CPAE Speaker Hall of Fame. She's also listed as a recommended expert through the Sloan Work and Family Research Network. So again, Eileen, welcome. Thank you, Deb. It's great to be here. You're sitting there in Atlanta, and I'm sitting here in California, and I love it. We're all I, in the same place at the same time. I know, I know. And where we are right now, as we are recording this, is stuck in our home offices. Sure. Um, you know, and, and uh, when this airs, more than likely, most of us will still be under quarantine and stuck at home. Um, a lot of my listeners know that I'm what they call medically fragile. And so mine gets extended no matter what. Um, but it's, it has definitely, this whole coronavirus thing has changed how we live, how we do business far more than I think anybody ever thought it would. Um, definitely changed more than anything pertaining to, say, September 11th. Or, or anything else. I mean, those, now we look back on them and those are almost kind of temporary. I think now we're really going to be making some major changes. And so I love that your book really does pertain to this. So hold the book up. I just have the digital version, so I can't van it. Here I am. So it is again called Your Resiliency GPS, a guide for growing through life and work. What I love about it is it really, you know, as the title says, it's talking about resiliency, but you have kind of a different definition for resiliency. So let's start there. Okay. It's a great place to start. Well, first off, I, I say dump the dictionary. Mm -hmm. um, the way the dictionary defines resilience uh, is great if you're a piece of steel that bends and that when the pressure mm -hmm. is off, it goes back to mm -hmm. its original place, right. or you're a willow tree that bends and when the wind is off, you go back. Mm -hmm. For human beings, I think that is an incorrect definition. I'm tired of people saying bounce back. Right. First off, there's no such thing right. as going back. And do we want to go back? 
back. Well, that, that's what's so, I think we yearn kind of for the normal. Mm -hmm. We want it the way it was. Mm -hmm. But the truth mm -hmm. of the matter, Deb, you and I are different today than we mm -hmm. were yesterday. Right. We're going to be different tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And I think you actually brilliantly stated that what we're experiencing right now gives us an opportunity to do what I think is the real definition of resiliency, mm -hmm. is to grow through mm -hmm. challenge or opportunity. So you end up wiser, smarter, better on the other side. We have an opportunity to grow here. Now, I know that terrifies many of us. Mm -hmm. But the truth of the matter is you, you can't just stay in one place. Right. Something, something's going to happen mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. And so I also believe that, that in order to grow through, by the way, notice I say challenge or opportunity. Mm -hmm. I think that resiliency is a life skill. Mm -hmm. It is not something that all of a sudden you go, oh, crap, it's a challenge. Oh, crap, yeah. it's ah, covid ah. It's, we need this all the time mm -hmm. in big ways and little ways. Mm -hmm. So this is, a, this is a skill we work on, much like you work on a muscle. Mm -hmm. But ultimately, resilience is about energy management. Right, right. Do I have the mental, emotional, physical mm -hmm. hardiness? Mm -hmm. And so when I think about building resiliency skills, mm -hmm. when I think about growing that muscle, is to look at what is it that gives me energy? Mm -hmm. What depletes the energy? Mm -hmm. And how is it that I walk through the life where I find myself now mm -hmm. so that I am living a life by design and not by default? Right. You know, one of the things that struck me when I was reading your book is the reminder that every one of us gets through this and goes through it differently. Yeah. You know, we've got some people who, uh, what, what's the saying, you know, like water off a duck's back. Mm -hmm. and, you, know, you can throw anything at them and they're just like, okay, whatever. And then we have other people who something that many people think is small and trivial, it really, really upsets them. Um, you know, and, and as you said, this is something we learned. And so more than likely when they were little, they didn't learn how to be resilient. Um, you know, and so talk to us, because as you said, it's a, it's a skill. It's, you know, something that we learn. How on earth can we get better at it? Or is there a better? I mean, maybe that's the other thing is, you know, okay, maybe there's not a better, there's just doing. And, and first off, I, let me acknowledge the fact that you said different, we are different places at different places in our mm -hmm. lives. And it depends on the event, the circumstance, mm -hmm. the, the good news and this is following 20 years worth of research, is resilience can be learned. Okay. And because resilience actually first and foremost starts in our head with mm -hmm. our thinking, with the conversations we say to ourselves. And we now know in brain research, the neuroplasticity that we can train new parts of our brain. Mm -hmm. Because you see, when we have an event and we go, oh no, oh no, oh no, this is terrible, this is terrible. The sky is falling, the sky is falling. The, the panic part of our brain mm -hmm. We trigger the primitive brain and the primitive brain, uh, and this is probably from, you know, as human beings developed over centuries and mm -hmm. eons and whatever, goes to look at panic first. Mm -hmm. And we look at fight or flight. Right. We look at this is danger. Mm -hmm. So our brains are wired for danger and we look mm -hmm. for that first. Mm -hmm. When you begin to retrain your brain, it's saying, whoa, whoa, wait, 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 maybe Maybe we're making this worse than this has to be. Mm -hmm. And that's why it is, it's a training issue because what our brain tells us and our heart is, we'll talk about the heart too, what the heart is saying, then it creates our behavior mm -hmm. and our responses mm -hmm. so that over time, over time, we can develop more, um, more resilient responses. Mm -hmm. um, and there are some people for whom this will not happen. Right. Because uh, they just, you know, this is the way it is. I've heard mm -hmm. uh, one friend who said, well, uh, I was born with negative genes. This is just the way I am. Right. We know people like that. It seems like that. It seems like I know people who no matter what, the sky is falling. I, I, now, this is going to date you and me, but there was a cartoon strip years ago called Little Abner. Mm -hmm. and there was a character in the cartoon strip called, I think it was... Um, Biddlefix, Joe Biddlefix. Mm -hmm. And in the cartoon strip, Joe Biddlefix always had a black cloud over his mm -hmm. head. Right. Right? So everything that happened was mm -hmm. wrong. Mm -hmm. But you and I know there are people, if you say, how are you? Mm -hmm. It is a litany of how bad they right. are. Right. You don't get fine. Mm -hmm. 
So if that's you, you get a choice. You want to carry that black cloud? Mm -hmm. Right, not my choice. Right. And by the way, one of the things I'm also discovering, and it's probably become more and more apparent with COVID-19, mm -hmm. is I don't want to, I don't want to be around. Right people who are like that. Mm -hmm. I don't want to see them on Facebook. Mm -hmm. I don't want to see them on LinkedIn mm -hmm. or Zoom. Uh, and when the time comes that we can move more freely than we can now, mm -hmm. I want to be with people who help me grow mm -hmm. instead of pulling me down. Right. And negative, if you're a negative person listening to this right now, I got to tell you, you are, an, you are a, a sea anchor that holds mm -hmm. everybody back from moving. Right. Right. And so it's a, it's your choice point. Mm -hmm. right. You like that, but I don't want to be with you. No, no. You know, and people still have to be realistic. I mean, you Absolutely. know, we can't, you know, and, and so, you know, I, I want to, you know, there's, there's obviously a big difference. And, and then there are those Pollyannas and sometimes I'm kind of a Pollyanna. I'm like, Oh yeah, whatever. But you know, it's, it's kind of that combination, but I, I love that you talk about, you know, not being around negative people and hoy. Social media, you know, it, uh, yeah. um, but I discovered as I was recovering from being ill that I had to be around people who were positive. And more importantly, when I was around somebody negative, that energy just kind of, yes. you know, and, and, and then that little black cloud was over me. And so there are some of them I can't cut loose. I mean, you know, for whatever reason, but I can definitely limit my exposure. To oh, that's, that's just, you said that so well. Um, sometimes when I, when I talk about uh, work-life integration mm -hmm. and, I, and I compare it to being in a boat mm -hmm. and there are different parts of the boat that mm -hmm. depending mm -hmm. on what's happening in our lives, we're sailing differently. But one part of the boat is the emotional center board. If you're mm -hmm. in a little one person sailboat, then a center board is what keeps a boat on an even keel. Mm -hmm. And we have people that are with us in that boat. Mm -hmm. And so one of the, one of the questions I like to ask is who do you have in your boat mm -hmm. and who do you want to keep in your boat? Mm -hmm. And who do you need to throw overboard? Right. Right. Goes, but it's my mother-in-law. Mm -hmm. Well, put her in a digging and pull yeah, her back. tie her on. <laughs> yeah, you should go to visit her. Mm -hmm. uh, but you don't have to hang. You don't have to hang around with her. Right. Um, and also, when you said, and and I'm gonna do a little tweak on something you said, okay. Deb, because I think it's a learning point. It's a learning point for me. Mm -hmm. When you said I had to be around positive people, mm -hmm. I'm gonna alter that and say I chose. True to be around. Mm -hmm. So here's one of the first things about learning and growing and resiliency mm -hmm. is to look at our choices. Mm -hmm. So what you chose was I chose mm -hmm. to be with people who fed my spirit, right. who made me laugh, mm -hmm. who brought me a meal when I, when I needed mm -hmm. it. So one of my questions to everyone who's listening to this is what are your choices? Mm -hmm. And are those choices that you choose to make? Now, mm -hmm. right now, you could choose to dot shelter in place. Mm -hmm. That's your choice. Right. Not no, wear a mask, do whatever. Mm -hmm. a mask. Those are all choices. Mm -hmm. All of our choices have, um, have a, uh, a response to them. Mm -hmm. If I choose this, this is going to happen. Mm -hmm. So you can't, like we have some people right now who say, I'm not responsible for anything. I'm not responsible mm -hmm. for it. Oh, yeah. yeah. No, 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 not me. Mm -hmm. um, but you do. And by the way, even no choice is a choice. Mm -hmm. Right. You chose not to choose. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'm just going to hang in here and mm -hmm. I'm just going to see what happens. Mm -hmm. And that's fine. Mm -hmm. But um, the, because my, my field is communication, mm -hmm. the power of our language, Deb, mm -hmm. to create what we experience is huge. Mm -hmm. So, for example, all of this talk about social distancing, mm -hmm. that is the wrong word. Right. It's right. Be not social distancing. Mm -hmm. It's physical distancing. Mm -hmm. What we need, what we yearn for mm -hmm. is social connection. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I'm seeing work that's coming out now and resources um, and research that is saying loneliness mm -hmm. can be a huge mental downer. Right. Want to know that we're not in this by ourselves. Mm -hmm. So the fact that we can in, in use our technology to reach out to each other, to see each other. Mm -hmm. Let me ask Just you. Just Zoom. <laughs> well, Zoom. Somebody sent me the funniest, uh, the funniest thing. It was the Leonardo da Vinci's classic Last Supper mm -hmm. in Zoom style. So right. Here, they were all in their little boxes. And all the apostles at the top, like little little Zoom windows. Mm -hmm. um, and let me ask you a question. 
Have you connected with people that you haven't talked to in a long time since this has happened? Mm -hmm. I have. I have, um, you know, and, and that's, what's been fun about this, you know, and, and of course the tragedy is that it takes something like, uh, like this for us to reach back to people. Isn't that the truth? And you said, and I, I love this when you said, what are the things that we, we will change? Mm -hmm. So my hope is that we will not go back into these places mm -hmm. of, even though we can get out, mm -hmm. we're still very singular and solitary. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now that we've learned that I can, oh my gosh, I can share what I'm feeling. Mm -hmm. I can talk about what I'm thinking. Mm -hmm. We can strategize where we go. Mm -hmm. That I, I'm not in this world alone. Mm -hmm. And aren't we seeing people now that we, you know, we're waving to people, even though they're at a mm -hmm. distance on the street, we're smiling at strangers. Right. You know, we're, we're saying thank you to the, to the, the clerk in the grocery mm -hmm. store. Mm -hmm. Thank you for being here today. We never said thank you before. No, no. We were like, it's their job, right? Yeah. And so, uh, in fact, the other day, uh, this isn't about me. This is, we can all do something like this. I think that one of the things that helps us grow our resilience is when we step out of ourselves, mm -hmm. what was me? And, you know, all this talk about, well, maybe we'll get rid of the post office. Well, the post office does a duty that it's amazing. I mean, it connects people in ways in rural mm -hmm. areas mm -hmm. and everybody down in the post office. So the other day I, I make a very mean lemon cake. It is the, it is the Ooh. star of my kitchen. Mm -hmm. So I took down lemon cakes to the mm -hmm. post office. Aww. Deb, they cried. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I thought we need to go to, go to your post office, mm -hmm. put your mask on, mm -hmm. your little plastic window mm -hmm. and you say, I just came in. I don't need stamps, but I just mm -hmm. want to say thank yeah. you. Mm -hmm. down the fort here mm -hmm. right you know one of the things that that dawned on me when i was out and about and i don't go out and about much because i really am in that category of you know you you need to stay home even if you have masks you know all those various things so you have my little mask on and i go to the grocery store and i realized that i smile a lot at people well can you tell am i smiling am i not smiling and so I had to use my words. I had to say, thank you so much for what you've been doing. Hi there. You know, whatever it was, because, you know, and, and um, you know, another thing, we, we, there's a trail behind our house and we walk on it um, every night. Great exercise that I was never as relieved as when they opened that back up. Should they have, I don't know, that's debatable, but um, you know, and, and so we walk on that and, and I realized that a lot of people that I meet I would just smile at. Now I have my mask on, you know, and, and everything. And so I have started saying, hi, good evening, you know, whatever it is to acknowledge their presence. And I think sometimes, and, and you mentioned this in, in your book, sometimes that's all we need. You know, we're, we might be feeling a little, uh, and all we need is somebody to acknowledge our presence. You know, and, and so just think about that, folks. You know, just say hi to somebody. Hello. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> you know, because this is the business power hour, mm -hmm. let me say something about those of us who are in management and in leadership mm -hmm. positions within mm -hmm. business, particularly now that people are distanced and you really have a virtual work, mm -hmm. whether you ever wanted it or not. Mm -hmm. Your ability as a leader, as a manager, mm -hmm. to show up, if it's technology or however you're going to do that, mm -hmm. and to smile to say to your teammates mm -hmm. to say to those people i really appreciate you hanging in mm -hmm. with me john how are you doing today tell mm -hmm. me how you are and mary over here right uh, i know you you know you just had a baby like six mm -hmm. months ago has mm -hmm. a baby when we connect mm -hmm. on that level mm -hmm. it begins to develop a very different bond mm -hmm. the people around us um the, his name is um in fact i gotta turn around and make sure i say it correctly his name is Vivak Murte. Mm. He is a um, Dr. Murte. Mm -hmm. He was the Surgeon General, the 19th Surgeon General of the United mm. States. Mm -hmm. And when he would gather his team together, he this book is called Together, The Healing Power of Human Communication. Mm. And what, what Vivek would do is they never started any kind of meeting until they, in fact, identified something that was unique to them and special. Like, you know, where do you want to go this summer? Mm -hmm. if you're going to go on vacation mm -hmm. um, or um, what's uh, what's the thing that really gave you a lot of laughter since the whole time we were together, mm -hmm. but what's the thing that's kind of weighing heavy on your mind or your mm -hmm. heart? Um, 
And so it's this notion, this, it's really, it's a wonderful, and this is the Surgeon General. Mm-hmm. And he's saying this is as important mm-hmm. to our health and well-being as whatever, whatever surgery, mm-hmm. medicine, how we work our healthcare systems, this human communication part. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, and I think so many bosses, managers, whoever, think that they shouldn't get personal with their employees. Um, you know, and, and they need to keep it strictly business, you know, and, and all of those things. And, and, but, you know, there's, it, there's very simple ways to do it. You know, people have pictures in their office of a hike they took, you know, so you can say, oh my gosh, that looks like a fun hike. You're not delving into their personal life. You're just making a, a simple, basic comment. And again, you're showing that you're interested in them as a person, not See, just oh, employee yeah. X. Deb, that's, you know, we think, and, and I, I've seen this, you know, I facilitated these meetings, it's mm-hmm. name, rank, and serial number. Mm-hmm. Okay. And the object of this meeting is to do blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. Whenever I take management groups away, we never start with, and therefore the problem is. Mm-hmm. We start with who sits around the table. Mm-hmm. I start with, um, you know, I'll give them an, uh, their individual assessments about how, how do they best communicate. Mm-hmm. Um, I will do... This was fun. I asked all the all the people who were coming, uh, and there's relatively small groups, like 20, mm-hmm. um, your favorite piece of music. Mm-hmm. And then periodically throughout, I would play the piece of music, and I'd say, okay, can you name that tune? Uh-huh. Whose favorite piece of music is that? Mm-hmm. It gives you another dimension mm-hmm. of the person. Right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> One time I did it, the song that was playing was In the God of the Vida, which is a head <laughs> song from the 60s. Right, right. The person whose favorite song that was was the only attorney in the group. It cracked everybody up mm-hmm. because they never thought this attorney mm-hmm. would be the person whose favorite song was this mm-hmm. head song from mm-hmm. the 60s. So, yeah, knowing it. In fact, to me, that's a, another intriguing thing mm-hmm. about the way in which we're communicating. Mm-hmm. And in Zoom, you know, when we have meetings, quote, in the office, mm-hmm. the office setting, it's the big chairs, it's mm-hmm. the table, it's the water glass. Right. Now we see people in their own personal mm-hmm. environment. Right. So right now, you are seeing me mm-hmm. in my home office. Mm-hmm. If the camera was a little bit wider, you would see pictures of my grandbabies. Mm-hmm. You'd see pictures of the books that I have. You'd see pictures of my husband. You'd see a Kuan Yin statue. Mm-hmm. You'd see all manner of things, mm-hmm. which tells you a little bit something more about me right. than sitting in a chair mm-hmm. around a mm-hmm. conference table. Right. You know, and it's funny because I have this plain background. Mm-hmm. Behind this plain background, is my fun stuff. Hmm. I had multiple people say it was too distracting. You know, and, 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 and then of course I thought about it. I thought, oh, well, okay, it's me, you know, and, it's, and I don't think it was distracting. I mean, it's not, not tons and tons of things. But, you know, then I thought, well, I must not be interesting enough. And, and so they were looking at what was on my wall instead of paying attention. But, you know, it, it is. It's one of those things. Um, and it was it, the, the, I talked with two people who were experts in listening. Hmm. And they were the two who said, remove the distractions so that when people are listening, they're listening just to me just to you know and and so i go back and forth you know like when i'm doing a zoom that's not part of this podcast this is not here you know people are seeing what i'm about um you know and and but but i i i love the whole concept with now as you were saying we're seeing people's home lives um you know we're we're seeing somebody go wandering through <laughs> How many, how many of those have we seen? Or they stand up and have shorts on, um, you know, and, and, or, you know, you know, now this is, I, I wear a t-shirt. Uh, sometimes I wear a polo shirt, you know, and, and so I'm always, you know, direct, but yeah, I've got sweats on. I don't have shoes on. I mean, you know, certainly not a way that I would be in an office, um, you know, and, and so I love that we are getting these snippets of people. And, you know, and sometimes it is a little distracting. I mean, you know, and, and that's, that is unfortunately part of the process of, you know, there were, they, it, it, nobody planned on this happening. So they didn't plan on the fact that people were going to see what was behind them when they're, you know, and, and, you know, so sometimes it is a little distracting. I was talking with someone yesterday who was saying that, you know, they had been on a, a conference call and, and somebody made a comment about her bedspread. 
And it was like, oh, maybe I shouldn't be, you know, <laughs> and, and, you know, and it was very nice. I mean, and she'd made the bed, you know, all these various things, but it was like, oh, maybe, maybe, you know, and, and so, you know, we might need to kind of rethink, but for some people, you know, being in their bedroom, being at their kitchen table right now, that's the only place they can be to, sure. to do these. You know, we don't all have home offices or, you know, the, the backdrop that we can put up. Right, right. You know, and, and, but I love that we are getting to know a little bit more about people. And as you said, people that we haven't touched base with in a long time. Um, you know, I've received emails from people that I haven't, haven't talked to in a while. Um, certainly, the, even some LinkedIn connections, things like that from people who said, you know, we connected years ago and never really did anything. Um, my aunt has, has gone back and she got out her Christmas cards from several years ago and is handwriting notes to everybody. You know, because when we send Christmas cards, it's the card. You might sign it. You might put two sentences of personal in it. You might put the, the, the copied letter, but how many of those are personal anymore? You know, mm -hmm. and, and so she's going back through and saying, you know, hey, just reaching out and saying, you know, wanting to know how you're doing. She's right. still not writing a ton, but she's making that connection again. And she's using the post office. Yes, I know. I know. We love the post office. We do. Well, one of the things that, that you talk about in your book is that there are four resiliency skills. Mm -hmm. And I love these um, because, you know, we're, we are talking about how to, you know, it, it, everybody's resilient a little bit or a lot. I mean, you know, the, you know and, and, but we need to work on these skills, whether we're the little bit or the lot. Mm -hmm. um, so what are those four uh, skills? And then let's talk about them in, in more detail. Okay. The four skills are, and I'm going to put them in the order somewhat of importance. The first skill is adaptability. Mm -hmm. And adaptability is, this is your brain talking to you first, mm -hmm. to look around at whatever is happening, the event, the circumstance, whatever, mm -hmm. and to determine in how many different ways may I choose to respond to this. Mm -hmm. And what makes this word powerful are two other words, requisite variety. Mm -hmm. Requisite variety comes from the field of biology. And it says that the organism with the greatest number of responses mm -hmm. is the one that survives. Mm -hmm. Not the strongest, right. not the smartest, mm -hmm. but the one that has multiple ways of responding. Mm -hmm. So first and foremost, for adaptability, we're saying, how many different ways can I choose to respond? And for example, right now to mm -hmm. this COVID-19, how many different ways can I choose to stay connected with my customers, mm -hmm. with my teammates, mm -hmm. with my family? Um, one of the things that I think can be a great thing that could come out of COVID-19 is that we realize when we are at home and we start to do quote our work, all of a sudden you're going to begin to wonder, why am I doing this? Mm -hmm. This doesn't make any sense. There are more right. systems and processes mm -hmm. and businesses that need to go away. Mm -hmm. Right. And because it's the way we've always done. Yeah. It. Oh yeah. That's the, and, and how many companies are wanting to get back to the way we've always done it? It is, it is, it doesn't make any sense. Mm -hmm. So, so I'll just say this, we can go back and look at this, but so mm -hmm. adaptability is the mm -hmm. first one. That's mm -hmm. the, that's the big one. Agility is the second one. And agility has to do with movement. Mm -hmm. It's one thing to think about things. The mm -hmm. other thing is to put things in action. Mm -hmm. So when I put things in action, what are the things I say to myself and how is it that I'm going to behave and act, mm -hmm. do things differently? Mm -hmm. And we can talk about that, Deb. What are the things I want to do, particularly if I am uh, in this, this home, I want to say homeschooled, but in this, this sheltered environment mm -hmm. where I have to stay within my house? What mm -hmm. are the things that I can do? So agility. Mm -hmm. The third skill is laugh ability. Mm -hmm. Laughter is a huge, it's a huge mm -hmm. resiliency skill. Mm -hmm. and you who have gone through cancer, you know darn well, and you have purposely said, I choose to be with people who mm -hmm. make, who aren't downers. They're not Debbie Downers. Mm -hmm. You find ways to laugh. Laugh is perspective. Mm -hmm. So when I can laugh at some of the things, and that's what we're seeing now, how many of us are getting crazy uh, emails or, or memes or whatever about mm -hmm. all of this stuff that it just, it makes you, it you just have to sit and laugh mm -hmm. because it gives you perspective. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the fourth skill is alignment. Mm -hmm. And alignment says, am I lined up mm -hmm. with that which is most important to me? Mm -hmm. Why am I here? Mm -hmm. 
what is my purpose? Mm -hmm. And we've been seeing this now for the last couple of years at organizations that people want to work for organizations that don't just concentrate on just the bottom line. Mm -hmm. But what is my contribution to the community, mm -hmm. to the nation, to my planet? Right. Uh, and you'll see this in the younger workers, the millennials. Mm -hmm. yeah, there's always going to be exceptions. Just mm -hmm. show me the money, show me the money, show mm -hmm. me the money. But even customers, clients mm -hmm. are buying things because they value the purpose of that organization. Right. So it's kind of like this triple bottom line. It's mm -hmm. profit, people, and planet. Mm -hmm. um, so those, those in a nutshell are the four skills. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, you know, I realized one of the things that I wanted to talk about before we do that, the four, is your book is called Resiliency GPS. What the heck does GPS stand for? <laughs> Thank you. It stands for your growth potential strategy. Mm. And I choose GPS because all of our life is a journey. Mm -hmm. And in order to make a GPS work, you first have to start with where you are. Mm -hmm. You can't tell Siri to take you to um, uh, the Marriott Hotel mm -hmm. in Newport Beach because Siri is first going to look around. Right. And say, where, where the heck are we starting from? Exactly <clears throat> where are we starting from. So throughout this book, what I do is take you through these skills, mm -hmm. but I constantly am asking questions mm -hmm. for you to think and act upon about where do you want to go now? Mm -hmm. And you and I both know, by the way, that the GPS can mm -hmm. also send you in the wrong way. Right, right. It can take you around the barn mm -hmm. instead of to the barn. Mm -hmm. and we do that in the choices of our life. Mm -hmm. I think that this is the this is what I want to do. And all of a sudden you step and go, oh, I don't think that's it. Mm -hmm. I think there must be a different way to do this. Mm -hmm. So so what this GPS is, is your growth potential strategy mm -hmm. as we move through developing, or the other word I like to use is cultivating mm -hmm. these skills. And one of the reasons I like cultivate so when you think about a garden and you mm -hmm. told me you got turkeys behind you and yep. you've got, mm -hmm. you got mm -hmm. boxes, so you've got some wildlife behind you and mm -hmm. I'll bet you dollars to donuts. You also have a garden. Do you not have a garden? Uh, I have some herbs that try really, really hard to not <laughs> die because of me. Well, I, bet <laughs> I bet if you weren't dealing with all the medical things, you probably would have a garden. Eh, so maybe. It's hard to do that. Mm -hmm. But if you think about the word cultivate, mm -hmm. if mm -hmm. I'm going to cultivate something, first mm -hmm. you have to till the soil. Mm -hmm. You have to turn it up and you have mm -hmm. to get rid of the stuff that doesn't belong. Well, in our life, we got to till the soil. Mm -hmm. the things that we are sitting in the soil of our life that I got to figure out what that is. Mm -hmm. Then I got to plant the seeds. What is the seeds that I want to work on mm -hmm. that I want to grow? Then I have to water them. Mm -hmm. Why do I come back and say, okay, that was good, but it needs more water. Mm -hmm. How do I weed? What's the stuff that mm -hmm. I need to get rid of? Right. So it's a constant. It's it's a constant way of again of growing, mm -hmm. just like we would grow flowers mm -hmm. in the garden. Right. Yeah. Right. You know, and it's funny, of course, because as I was reading everything and, and, you know, thinking about GPS, I was thinking that my poor little GPS is continually going recalculating, recalculating. <laughs> And, you know, and it, or, you know, and my mother just loves it when it does that. She thinks it's the funniest thing in the world when my GPS, you know, I'm going and it says recalculation. Like, oh. You know, but I think that's one of the things that we need to, to remember is we can recalculate. Absolutely. There's, there's nothing that's telling us, you know, that we have to drive off that cliff. Mm -hmm. You know, if our GPS takes us somewhere where we're thinking not supposed to be here, you can turn a different direction. Again, it comes back to you get to make that choice. Right. And in my book, for each one of these skills, I, I talk about recalculating questions. Mm -hmm. There are some things that you should, you could answer, mm -hmm. you know. So do I want to recalculate what's mm -hmm. going on here? Um, so that, thank you, GPS. That gave mm -hmm. me a wonderful way to ask questions. Just mm -hmm. say, let's just recalculate. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and many times you're, you're going, oh, okay, this is the right way to go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes you override Siri. Mm -hmm. Oh, I know. And then she goes recalculating. Yeah. But, and of course, what I hate is down here in, in Atlanta, she will tell me go West. I have no clue what way is West. <laughs> I mean, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm from Colorado West were the Rocky mountains. Got it. You know, you do what way was west. Down here, she says, go northeast. I'm like, it's almost like if she were to say, turn at Waffle House. Uh, <laughs> you know, 
there's a Waffle House on every corner. Um, you know, and, and but you know, it's it's one of these things where maybe what I'm trying to, to ramble about is it is a it kind of a team effort. Mm-hmm. You know, Siri's telling me one thing, and I'm thinking, okay, let's you know, and and so it's that way as we go through our life, our career. You know, we're thinking, okay, we need to readjust. We need to do this. We need to do that. But you know, I think one of the big things is we start with we're trying to get to point X. Mm-hmm. We might not ever get to point X, you know, or we might have, you know, we might gone, have gone to A, B, and C. Oh, and then we really need to go to point X, or we might decide we never needed to go to point X. Um, it's it's back to that whole flexibility and, and resiliency thing. You know, I I love the fact you said where do we get to go because I think sometimes what also drains our energy mm-hmm. is we set our sight and the goal mm-hmm. is three hundred miles out there, right. And what I really need to do is just do the, get to the end of the block. Mm-hmm. And at the end of the block, I say, mm-hmm. okay, now what? Right. So I, I, I believe, and particularly as we start to come out of this and, and we will, mm-hmm. we don't totally reinvent what we're doing. We're right. saying, what is the things that I've learned in this, mm-hmm. you know, that I think we need to do, I need to do mm-hmm. differently. And what are the, the small steps, mm-hmm. the goals? And that's another thing for when you are, you know, homebound and not in the office. Okay. What are the, what are the three things I need to do today? Not the 33 things. Right. Um, I, I'm seeing more research that's saying now that people are sequestered in their homes, burnout is even bigger, mm-hmm. which is why it's probably a good thing. My book is coming out in August right. because uh, while it was a, it was declared a, a, a global by the world health organization mm-hmm. it was a global occupational hazard. Uh, they declared it that May of 2019, this COVID-19 and this, this having to shelter in place, mm-hmm. uh, people are burning out even more. Mm-hmm. And so one of the ways you want to say is what are the just three things, mm-hmm. just three things personally, right. professionally, mm-hmm. I want to do today. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right. So let's, let's talk about the four skills, um, right. you know, and, and I, there are times where one is more important than the other. You know, I think we always need to kind of keep all four in mind. So it's not, oh, we don't have to worry about that one today. But, you know, you mentioned that, that adaptability is, is, you know, and, and I think especially now. I mean, you know, look at how many people never, ever, ever, ever thought that they'd be working from home be teaching their kids from home, would have their spouse, their partner, their parents, their whoever living with them. I mean, you know, there's so many things. And uh, unfortunately, you know, and and I heard this on the the radio today, the level of bad things has gone up. Domestic abuse, um, alcoholism. (laughs) I mean, I got to admit, there are times where I'm thinking, wine, I need wine. Oh my God. And, and I don't have kids at home. I don't have you know, all these things that so many people do, but you know, so, being adaptable is I think one of the absolute hardest things. And maybe part of it is because things are so uncertain. We don't know when are we going, you know, there, and, and let's be honest, there's not going to be a normal, you know, no matter what, we're not going back. Companies are going to decide, ooh, maybe I don't need half of those employees. Maybe I don't need, you know, maybe we don't need them to, to be in. We don't need to be paying rent. It worked great to have them home office. Um, you know, all of these various things. So we're not going back. I mean, we're not, you know, there, there's no back to be going, going to. But, you know, not knowing, you know, we don't know that the day that we're recording this here in, in um, Atlanta may or may not at midnight, the shelter at home expire. You know, okay, if it does, what does that mean? If it doesn't, what does that mean? You know, many businesses very specifically don't know when they're going to be allowed to open. What are the rules going to be when they're allowed to open? I mean, all these various things. And so that, it it, it really screws up the being adaptable when you're not sure what the heck you're even adapting to. So let me respond to this in a couple of ways. First off, we can only adapt where we show up, and mm-hmm. that is today. Mm-hmm. I can't control what happened yesterday. Right. And I really have no con- control over tomorrow. Mm-hmm. So first and foremost is what are the things that I can do today? Mm-hmm. Just today. Mm-hmm. That's it. Because what gets us into a place of panic is because we don't know the future, mm-hmm. and we keep trying to live there. Right. And, right. and I don't know how to live there. 
-hmm. So my place of power, remember I also said uh, resiliency is energy management. Mm -hmm. My place of power says, what is it that I'm doing today that is either giving me energy or depleting energy? Mm -hmm. And what can keep us back from being adaptable, where I show up right here, right Mm -hmm. now today, is when my brain goes, and you and I talked about this, Deb, Mm -hmm. my brain goes into negativity. Right. I say, why in, the, why, why in the world is she playing with that toy right now? Mm-hmm. Can't you see that I'm on the phone? How mm-hmm. come he's asking me when dinner is? He can do dinner on his own. So we get, you know, we, we fall into that. Right. And it becomes a circle, a cycle. You know? <laughs> it is. Mm-hmm. And also what happens with negativity, and frankly, women do this more than men. We're very good mm-hmm. at being creative about negativity. Mm-hmm. We can make it up with the best of them. Mm-hmm. Oh, mm-hmm. my gosh, this is going to happen. I right. have a relative in my life. Mm-hmm. Let me just give you, this is a great example. She'll turn anything into something negative. And mm-hmm. she was visiting here and my sister's driving her up this very windy road in Los Angeles. And Mildred says, oh, there must be a lot of accidents here. Mm-hmm. What? Well, well, no, Mildred, you know, I worked here for 20 years. I've never mm-hmm. seen an accident. Well, we're not home yet. <laughs> You know, I'm going to be negative and you're, I'm going to do it no matter what. (laughs) So, so the things that hold us back from being adaptable are negativity. Mm -hmm. It holds us back because we say it's not the way I used to do it. Mm -hmm. And when we get stuck in the way I used to do it, Mm -hmm. I think this is a great time for us to grow by saying, Mm -hmm. so what, who cares? What difference is it? Right. Who said this? What would happen if we're going to discover mm-hmm. some new things? We don't have to remember said small goals. Mm-hmm. You don't have to sell your firstborn child, but what is the two step? Yeah, I'll try it. Get mm-hmm. back. Let's see what it looks like. Oh, well, if that- it doesn't work, you can change again. It is. The other thing that can help us in adaptability, because mm-hmm. remember, we're looking for requisite variety. Mm-hmm. We're looking for different ways to respond. Mm-hmm. Is the thing that I think of as intelligent optimism. Mm. You talked about the fact that there are those Pollyannas. Mm. Oh, la, 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 la. It's going to be just fine. Well, mm-hmm. throw up. That's not going to happen. Then you have the doom and glooms. Mm-hmm. Intelligent optimism is where you take what is happening, mm-hmm. you acknowledge the negative part of it. Mm-hmm. At the same time, paradoxically, you hold on to the thought, and I'm going to figure my way out of this. Mm-hmm. And what I just described to you was something that's called the Stockdale Paradox. Mm. Um, Admiral James Stockdale, mm-hmm. Navy pilot, excuse me, Air Force pilot, mm. Navy, uh, no, Navy pilot, mm-hmm. shot down in Vietnam, mm-hmm. tortured for six years in a POW camp. When he got out, mm-hmm. he said, and he was very, he, he was the one that's instrumental in pulling the prisoners of force together and helping mm-hmm. them. But he said, we could hold two very different thoughts. Mm -hmm. One thought was, this is brutal, unrelenting, and terrible. Mm -hmm. The other thought was, I am going to survive this. Mm -hmm. And so holding those two thoughts is not denying the reality Mm -hmm. of what's going on. But the other thought is saying, I am bigger than this. Mm -hmm. I am going to get through this. Mm -hmm. So that when I say that, now that gives me the ability to adapt in different mm-hmm. ways. Let me tell you one more quick story. And I, I want to make cognizant of our time too, because I know we have the other three skills. Mm-hmm. I remember this and I thought about it the other night when I woke up in the middle of the night. This was back when um, we had Americans who were held captive by, was it Iran? Iran. Iran. Mm-hmm. Iran. Okay. Mm-hmm. And I read about the one of the prisoners that they were in whatever the cell block was together Mm -hmm. when the guards would come in the highest ranking man that was there said welcome Mm -hmm. have a seat now what you think about this he couldn't do anything but he took command of Mm -hmm. his situation i'm Mm -hmm. in control won't you Mm -hmm. please have a seat Mm -hmm. just as if it was his living room Mm -hmm. he wasn't going to cower in a corner he just didn't have It was that small piece of power that Mm -hmm. says, I'll take whatever control I have, Mm -hmm. even if it's in a cell block. Right, right. You know, and so many times it's, it's how we phrase it, you know, and, Mm -hmm. and, um, you know, and, and and I was thinking about this because of what's been going on with, with everything, you know, so many people, I'm stuck at home, I'm stuck at home, I'm stuck at home. Change one word. I'm safe at home. That's a lovely way. And it, well, you know, yeah, I'm still stuck at home. I'm still not overly thrilled that I'm stuck at home, 
But overriding that is I'm safe at home. Well, tell, let me give you another example. Let's move to agility because okay. again, we want to get to those Perfect. things. Agility mm -hmm. is what can you do? Mm -hmm. All right. So you are safe at home. Mm -hmm. What I think, this is how, again, you rethink differently. Mm -hmm. What is it that I can do in this place where I am now? Mm -hmm. What are the opportunities that are presented to me? So first and foremost, agility, we need a routine. Because mm -hmm. when we're working outside of our home, we have a routine. You get right. So create a routine for yourself. It's something mm -hmm. you can do. Mm -hmm. Create a place and a space for you to do whatever work is yours to do. Mm -hmm. Then say, what can I learn today? Mm -hmm. See, we're so busy. We we mm -hmm. we don't get to do it. What, what did I learn? Maybe I'll you know I'll take thirty minutes and I'll go to YouTube. And I've always wanted to know how to play the ukulele. Mm -hmm. You know what? You could learn to play the ukulele. Yeah. Huh? You're not you can, commuting anymore. You've got all that time. <laughs> um, you can learn to play games with your families. You know, we never play games or advice mm -hmm. to you. Well, let's, let's, uh, let's play a game. Mm -hmm. let's, let's, let's learn to do that. Mm -hmm. uh, let's go if you can. A great thing that you can do is you, we never have time to go outside. Let's go outside. Mm -hmm. You said you and your husband walk a trail behind mm -hmm. your house. Mm -hmm. that's, an, that's agility. Mm -hmm. that's doing something and to be in nature even if you just sit for 10 mm -hmm. minutes with your face toward the sun mm -hmm. these are all ways of which you are what i think of as controlling the controllable mm -hmm. so if i want to be agile what is it that i have control over mm -hmm. within this space so what is it that i can create a routine mm -hmm. okay what are the things that i can learn mm -hmm. uh, what oh, exercise oh my god mm -hmm. This is huge. Mm -hmm. This is huge. Mm -hmm. Now today, here my husband and I rolling around on the floor doing sit-ups. Mm -hmm. You know, we're doing uh, push-ups. We're mm -hmm. doing reverse push-ups. Mm -hmm. You know, we're trying to do a plank. Mm -hmm. you know, it's the best we can do inside. But whatever you can do physically, mm -hmm. because your body and your mind are mm -hmm. going to operate a lot better. Right. So that's what agility can mm -hmm. do for us. Mm -hmm. When I restructure and think differently about the advantages. Mm -hmm of being safe mm -hmm. in this house. You know, and we need to feel like we've got at least a little bit of control. I mm -hmm. think that is, you know, that is, and so, you know, is it, okay, I'm going to get up still at six every morning. I'm going to do this. I mean, you know, we, we still need that little bit of control. And it's funny, that's one of the things that I've heard people saying who are homeschooling their kids they're really trying to stay with that schedule that the kids had when they were in school um mm -hmm. you know as, as much as they can you know but sure. but you know the, the kids if for them it's important to know you know what at 11 o'clock we're gonna do x now it might be 11 10 it might be 10 45 but you know they they need that little bit of structure to kind of hang on to you know that's i took long ago and far away i taught school Mm. And one of the things that I realized, I had seventh and eighth graders. Oh, dear. Is that, you know, I loved them. They, they were great. But what they wanted was discipline mm -hmm. and structure mm -hmm. because it gave them a sense of security. Right. There was another teacher who the kids just ran wild. Mm -hmm. And they made fun of that teacher mm -hmm. when they came in. And I'm not saying I'm the greatest teacher in the world, but, but the kids responded to mm -hmm. the structure. Let mm -hmm. me say one other thing to do about agility because we're talking that's action mm -hmm. but things in motion. Mm -hmm. And I think I'm reading a lot about this too, is rather than jump into what I'm going to do, mm -hmm. stop, breathe. Mm -hmm. Meditation is mm -hmm. powerful. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't mean you got to sit and stare at your navel. Mm -hmm. It means that you still down mm -hmm. your heart. Mm -hmm. And you just breathe. Right. You just mm -hmm. breathe. Mm -hmm. And there's apps that you can get on your phone. Um, there's a publication called Mindfulness. You can mm -hmm. go to mindfulness.org and mm -hmm. pull down things. So I wanted to say that that's, that's something else mm -hmm. to do, which is to actually not doing, but mm -hmm. being. Right. Right. Being in the silence. Yeah. And, the and, and the calming breath. I mean, you know, that's, I think that's one of the things that, that we lose track of, you know, and, and again, we're not talking, you know, I, when I go in for my treatments, of course, one of the things that they do before I can leave is they take my blood pressure, need to make sure that I'm healthy enough to leave. 
And there are times where, you know, like there was one time where the ladies on either side of me were having a political discussion. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, and they were, it, it got hot. And there I am in the middle, you know, trying to read my book and, and, you know, and, and, but of course my blood pressure had gone up. And so they came and they took my blood pressure and it was too high to let me go. And I said, give me a couple minutes. Mm -hmm. And I closed my eyes. And now luckily those ladies had left, but you know, I closed my eyes and I breathed deeply and slowly. You know, mm -hmm. and, and I held it and I dropped my blood pressure 20 points. Wow. I mean, they were just, they were like, oh my gosh. I said, that's all I needed was to calm myself right. back down. Right. Right. Powerful. Powerful. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, when you said those ladies and the political stuff, I mean, that's, that is the stuff that makes our blood pressure crazy. Oy. Oy. Yeah. But mm -hmm. that third skill, the laughability mm -hmm. skill. Mm -hmm. Um, they say laughter is the shortest distance between two people. Mm -hmm. If I got two people who are going at it, if I can get them to laugh, mm -hmm. right? I've just made some kind of difference there. Mm -hmm. So I think finding things mm -hmm. that even give you just a, a small chuckle, mm -hmm. uh, it, it's again, it's mm -hmm. a resiliency skill. Mm -hmm. So what we want to do is we want to, what I think of is look for the funny. Mm -hmm. And um, you were telling me some things that were funny that occurred to you as mm -hmm. you are, uh, as you are in this, this process of becoming better mm -hmm. through the cancer that you have survived and mm -hmm. you're, and they make you laugh mm -hmm. and that laughter, when we laugh, the endorphins mm -hmm. go up, yep. you know, the, the, uh, the cortisol, you know, all mm -hmm. the things that can make us crazy and mm -hmm. brings back the good stuff. Mm -hmm. So looking for things to laugh. Uh, mm -hmm. My husband right now is reading, Leo Rastin's book is, I think it's called The Great Book of Jewish Humor. Mm. I can hear him in the den. He is howling. Mm -hmm. right. And the, it's a book. <laughs> reading a book. Yeah. If, when was the last time we got to read a book? Mm -hmm. He is just, and I love it. Uh, when we go and look at, you know, we'll go to Netflix or something. Mm -hmm. What are we looking at? Mm -hmm. um, we looked at um, American in Paris. Mm -hmm. uh, singing in the Rain. Mm. Okay. For those younger people, believe mm -hmm. it or not, those back in the days when there was music and singing and dancing. Mm -hmm. but looking for things and you went, oh. Mm -hmm. I know, it makes you feel good. Mm -hmm. I don't need to look at blood and guts and thunder. No. Mm -hmm. uh, I want something that if I'm going to close mm -hmm. my eyes when that thing is over, mm -hmm. I want to just close my eyes smiling. Mm -hmm. Right, right. So the last skill, talk mm -hmm. about smiling. The last skill is alignment. Mm -hmm. And alignment, I think it's best expressed by using the words of Viktor Frankl, mm -hmm. who survived the Holocaust mm -hmm. and in his book, Man's Search for Meaning. Mm -hmm. He has a statement that has always stuck with me, Deb. And he says, man, and I will say, and woman, can survive any what if they have a why. Mm -hmm. Something that is mm -hmm. bigger than you, mm -hmm. that is a why that lets you continue. Mm -hmm. Whether it's because you want to walk your firstborn down the aisle when mm -hmm. she's married, mm -hmm. whether the why is I want to make a difference in my community. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's a volunteer role that you play with an organization, mm -hmm. but there's something that is, that is something that's bigger than you. Mm -hmm. And so first, let me say thank you for inviting me to be your guest because my why, which I've had since I was in high school, mm -hmm was to make a difference. Mm -hmm. And I remember thinking, I don't know if I can help people get wiser, but maybe I can help people feel happier or mm -hmm. more comfortable. Mm -hmm. um, and so the way in which I operate on that in the world is, is by words, by mm -hmm. the written word, mm -hmm. by the spoken word, mm -hmm. um, to see if I can be a contribution, that's it. My husband said, well, you know, you need to go out, you need to go out. I said, you know, Bill, as long as I can feel that I've made a contribution mm -hmm. and we all can make contributions, right. whether you take the cake to the post office mm -hmm. or you offer to go to the grocery store mm -hmm. for your shut bash, you know, neighbor who can't mm -hmm. go out, mm -hmm. all of these are contributions. Mm -hmm. So being clear on that why and every day saying, what was the contribution mm -hmm. that I made? And mm -hmm. that allows you to do one other thing. It's to be grateful. Right. Right. Yeah. You know, and, and sometimes that is hard. I mean, let's, let's be honest, but 
you know, and, but sometimes it's something little, you know, I, I tell people, you know, people that, that know a lot of what I've been through and I've been through a lot. I mean, I think I'm up to surgery 17, 17, who would have thought, um, you know, and, and I think I'm going to have a party when we hit 20, but you know, hopefully that's like a long way off, but, um, but you know, people they'll say, you know, oh my gosh, you know, they're, they're, I'm, I'm, um, an inspiration to them. I'm, you know, and, and I mean, all these, and, and I, I, you know, I'm, I'm very grateful for anything somebody says, but you know, usually what I tell them is, you know, the alternative is just not acceptable. <laughs> and which, you know, yeah, see, it, it, it makes you laugh, but it is also true. I mean, you know, because I could have at many points said me, <laughs> I'm done, I'm done, you know, and, and, um, but, and, and so, yeah, it's, it's getting through and, 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 you know, people who know me, and if you haven't figured out by now, anybody who's paying attention, I get through a lot of life by laughing. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, tr- but I try, you know, I don't poke fun. I don't, you know, don't do things like that. But, but yeah, it's sometimes my goal is that I get to tomorrow. I mean, you know, and you know, I, mean, you know, they, they, I was asked by, um, there's a site called eSpeakers, which is uh uh, it's an online way of keeping track of uh, mm. engagements and stuff mm-hmm. like that. And they mm-hmm. asked me what I create a little video about why you're, why I'm still happy. Mm-hmm. And Deb, what you said is, it just took like one minute. Mm-hmm. And I said, well, I woke up this morning, you were on my mind. <laughs> That's what makes me happy. Mm-hmm. As I woke up, mm-hmm. I have another day. Mm-hmm. What oh, yeah. a gift. Mm-hmm. What a gift in mm-hmm. that. Right, right. You know, and there will be things in it that happen that you're like, oh, God, that sucked. <laughs> but it, you, we, we make it through the day and, and we get to be able to go to sleep and wake up again. Um, you know, and, and then, you know, I think especially now, you know, we're, we're very grateful because there are so many who aren't, you know, who, who aren't making it through. Um, you know, we, we, some stupid little bug that we thought wasn't going to do anything. It's just catastrophic for so many people and doesn't cause anybody, you know, anything for, for other things. But, you know, we, we need to be grateful that we made it through because there are people who didn't. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I believe I keep a gratitude journal. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think writing it either at the end of the day or the beginning of the day mm-hmm. or both. Just say one or three things. Mm-hmm. And you're right. Some days, you know, I got to breathe. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I, I had avocado toast. Yeah. You know, yeah. Whatever, mm-hmm. whatever that is. Mm-hmm. It, it, when you begin to look at how much we do have, mm-hmm. if you have one person who cares about you, mm-hmm. what a gift. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and it, it is, it, you know, it. It, it's, it is a challenge every day for everybody, you know, and, and, you know, I, I had a day last week and I don't have these real often, but I had, I had one of those days where it was, nobody will notice if I'm gone, mm. you know, and, and I mean, and I don't know what triggered it. I don't know what the heck was going on. I'm sure part of it was what I am now calling Corona cranky. <laughs> and, but of course that passed, you know, now if it hadn't, I would hope that I would get help. You know, and, and that is, that is, you know, one of the other things is folks, we're not in this alone. Um, you know, whether it's Corona, whether it's that you, you are sick, whether it's that you're not sure about your job, there are resources, there are people that can help you, you know, and, and, you know, so please reach out to, to people. I mean, that, that is, that it, you know, that's, there's, there's absolutely nothing wrong with it. And it doesn't mean that you're any less if you have to ask for help. That's so true. I'm glad you said that because I think the ability to ask for help, mm-hmm. particularly if you're in a leadership position, mm-hmm. say, you know what, you're going to see some things I don't see. I need to know what you see. Oh yeah. That we are on this. And so asking for help is a great strength. Mm-hmm. Right. Well, oh my gosh, Eileen, we are at the top of the hour. One of the things that I really wanted to talk with you about was the fact that you are a professional speaker. You, you, give presentations, you work with companies and how in the heck are you going to do that, you know, going forward? So see, that's why we just have to have you on again is to talk about that because I think that is going to be some of the things that change, you know, are we going to be having conferences? Are we going to be having 
in-person training. And for those who are, are listening to the podcast, I put that in my little air quotes. Um, you know, is in-person going to be online as opposed to sitting at tables together? I mean, all these various things. So we just have to have you on again. Um, you know, and, and, to, and, and, you know, so yeah, so we'll, we'll get you on the schedule. Um, but between now and then, how do people find you and connect with you? Thank you so much for asking that. First off, as long as they can see my name, they can mm -hmm. connect with me that way. So I'm on LinkedIn. Uh, I'm on Twitter. My, you put my name in there and my Twitter handle is Mac Darling, M-A-C mm -hmm. Darling, Mac Darling. Um, I'm also on Facebook. Mm -hmm. My website is chock-a-block full of stuff. And of oh, course- and tons of great resources. There's, there is, there's, there's articles, there's books. You can also go on Amazon and find my book, Your Resiliency GPS. Mm -hmm. And you can also pre-order the one that's going to come out in August. to break through Building mm -hmm. Resilience to Refuel, Recharge, and Reclaim What Matters. Mm -hmm. right. So there are many ways that you can reach out to me. You can sign up for my, you can sign up for my blog post. For I my, did. You did. I saw I did. it. I signed up earlier today. Mm -hmm. You signed up. He signed up, but we won't inundate you with a ton of stuff. I don't believe in doing that. In fact, the, the resiliency report says it's published when the mood strikes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the mood doesn't strike all that often. We'll have another one coming out. In a right, couple right. I love it. You know, and, and I really have had such a delightful time talking with you. And I think it's so important right now that people remember it will get through this. You know, it, it's going to be different. You know what? There's, there's, you know, and I, I, I've seen memes where they've said, you know, maybe, you know, why do we want to go back? That was the problem. <laughs> and, you know, some things like that, like pollution, you know, all sorts of things like that. So, you know, I, we are going forward. Will it be difficult? Sure. You know, you know, sometimes things just hurt your soul, your heart, your head, you know, whatever to, to get forward, but we will get through it. Um, ask for help when you need it, but we're resilient. We really are resilient people. We can get through this. I do strongly encourage people to read your book. I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I thought it was, was very interesting. Again, it's called Your Resiliency GPS, a guide for growing through life and work. You can find it everywhere. And of course we have a link on, on our website. Um, but you know, is, are, are there any final words that you want to leave us with, Eileen? You know, I think I'm just going to leave you with the words of Howard Zinn. There are many people who have so much more wisdom than I do. Howard Zinn was a philosopher, and he said, to have hope, one does not need certainty, only possibility. Oh, I love it. I love it. Well, I am Deb Creer. I've been having the most delightful time talking with Ellen McDar. And until next time, everyone have a great day. Tune in for our next program for even more trends, best practices, and techniques for how to make your business a success. The Business Power Hour, hosted by Deb Creer, is proud to be part of the C-Suite Network.